Hey everyone, it's Swiss 65 again, and today we take a look at building Rodin's Lag 3 World War II Soviet fighter in 172 scale. This kit is a reboxing from a 25 plus year old boxing from ICM, and it shows. Starting with opening the box and the clear parts not being bagged separately. Nothing was scratched, but the potential was always there. In reviewing the sprues, you can see that ICM intended this kit to be used to build multiple variants which when combined with the simplified instructions can cause some head scratching moments. My only advice here is to read through the instructions several times and dry fit often. The cockpit built up pretty quickly. It's not overly detailed. There's a few parts and the smallness of the aircraft kind of makes hyper detailing a little overkill for this product. I did add seat belts cut down from Tamiya tape and some light metal dry brushing to show wear, but most of it gets lost as the cockpit gets buttoned up. Fit along the fuselage is not great, and the first real issue was getting the cockpit to fit into the fuselage as it's installed from the bottom up and there's no locating pins to tell you where to stop or where it actually needs to fit. You have to do it all by eye. Lots of sanding and test fitting is required to get it to sit just right. In the end, I had to add the seats after everything was already glued in place as it just kept pinging off. There wasn't any good attachment points for the seat backer to the seat bottom. The underside intakes and radiators were very fiddly and not always clear in the instructions how to assemble what parts, when, and where. In the end, I sanded and carved away plastic until I got the parts to fit into place and looked correct. Another major fit issue was along the wings and the wing roots. Without any locating pins or detents, it made alignment quite difficult. However, the fitment to the body was really bad. A lot of putty was used to try and help all the gaps to joints. After a couple rounds of puttying and sanding, I gave up and just primed the whole thing. It wasn't perfect, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. So I proceeded onto the final paint colors. Before any camouflage could be applied, I wanted to get the white stripes onto the tail. I did this by painting the tail top flat white and then adding strips of Tamiya tape to give me the finished stripes that are in the photograph and on the back of the box art. I then flipped the plane over and painted the entire belly blue. Vallejo has this color listed as AMT7 grayish blue. After that paint dried and cured, I taped off the edges so I could come back with a lighter gray color. Vallejo has this listed as AMT-11 blue gray and got the overall top color on. It's quite a dark blue gray, so I did come back and add a little bit of blue to it to lighten it up and give it a more bluish hue. After that had dried and cured, I came back with tacky putty and tape to tape off the areas that would stay light gray and laid a darker gray over top. Again, listed as AMT-12 dark gray. And yes, it's almost a black color. And now for my favorite part of every build, the big reveal to see if the masking worked. Yes, it all worked, even the stripes. After an overall gloss coat, it's time to start panel lining and weathering. Brown liner for the belly, remembering to wipe the enamel base paint in the direction of airflow. And for the top side, I use an all over black liner. It worked okay, but it's very subtle. It's there, and this is one more layer of weathering to build upon. Now onto the decals. Soviet planes apparently didn't have a lot of stenciling or markings, and there's a very few decals provided. But these two show their age, not in the quality of the printing, but in how difficult they release from the paper backing. So much so that it, should I build another one, I would really consider just masking and painting these in place. Regardless, the decals needed to be sealed 
under another gloss coat. This keeps them from silvering and helps blend them into the paint. Time to build the undercarriage, starting with those underwing rockets and drop tanks. Once the gear was added, it's time to add weathering powders. For this little warbird, I chose a light gray powder to help lighten and blend the darker colors. I used a red and brown powder mix to get the rust on the exhaust, as well as some exhaust streaking down the fuselage. The final step is to seal all of this work under a flat matte varnish and finally add all the rest of the clear parts and remove the canopy mask. And of course, there'll be some touch up needed, but we'll cover that off camera. Lastly, we need to add the lag three to the diorama base. And there you go, folks. This is my version of a 172 scale Soviet World War II era single seat fighter plane from the early war. And if you like this video, I would hope that you would give me a like and a subscribe as it really does help feed the algorithm.